Hi, this is Hallie, and I'd like to welcome you to Countdown to 8 Fun Valentine Little Crafts that we are going to be doing on this collective share. And I will be doing like a little voiceover on it because these are videos that I've already created. They're on my playlist, and you can look at them individually off of the playlist, or you can just use this collection here and here we go <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna do is this little gnome project and I'm going to start talking you through each little share did about a one, one and a half inch slit make sure you didn't go too far down because you don't want it to go all the way to the bottom or all the way to the top because it will rip and tear. So just leave yourself just enough room to pull out some stuffing for you can stuff it full of candy goodness. Remove the yucky sand that's inside of it and replace it with the candy. The candy is going to give it that foundation to stand up, so you don't need that weight in there anymore. So I did two different candy packs. I did the Valentine's candy, then I did the hard candy to give it some weight. So now we're just going to poke up three holes on each side. Very carefully, make sure you don't cut right to the edge. And this is where you're going to put your grommets. Now the grommets are not as hard as I thought they were going to be. They're pretty easy, especially this method. I just picked up a little grommet um, toolkit. <laughs> Again, my head and my hammer fell off. <laughs> my bad. And I just pound that in there and I did that on each side. Now we have our little grommets in there. We are going to stuff them full of candy goodness and then lace them up. And you can use any type of ribbon you want to lace this little guy up, whether it's the satin ribbon or the, um, you can even use the shoestring, jewelry leather, whatever you have on hand that you want to use. So what I did is after I stuffed him full of candy goodness, I put the stuffing back in there to give him some fullness and fluffiness. And then I put a cute little bag of candy in there that the kiddos can have. What's fun is all this came from the Dollar Tree. So yes, you can. You can make some really cute stuff for Valentine's Day without breaking the bank. My grandkids absolutely love these little guys. And we're going to jump on to the next video share here.
This particular one is a ribbon heart wreath. The form is from the Dollar Tree. The ribbons are all from Michaels. And you can pick up those heart forms um, pretty much anywhere. And what I did is I spray painted it with the white spray paint, which turned it pink. So that was kind of cool. I did just a light spray. You don't have to do that. And then get your ribbons to coordinate and match. And again, um, I'd like to share that all these videos on this collective share are all my playlists on my YouTube channel. So you can actually look at the individual videos where I'm talking you through it individually as well. Or you can see where my mouth is going, but you're not hearing anything because I'm doing the voiceover. But if you want to actually watch the video, you most certainly can go into the YouTube playlist and check them out. So on here, what I did is I used the zip ties and you just run them through the form and you zip tie your bows on. And I did three big bows on each side just to give it some fullness and cuteness. Always fold your bows in half to get the center and then squeeze them tight. I always leave my zip ties long until I'm done making my form. Then I go back and I trim them. So we're just going to twist and fluff and twist and fluff. And then, um, as I've always shared before, too, measure twice, cut once. <laughs> you can always trim things down if you leave them long. That's uh, up there that just popped up as another wreath that will be coming up that I'm going to show you how to do the full ribbon wreath um, as well on this particular share. And I also have that on my YouTube channel on my playlist. So we're just going to do two loops and we're going to wrap them, not, not zigzag them. That way we have the pretty pattern on the ribbon. So we're just going to loop, 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 or you can zigzag, zigzag. Depends if you have the pattern on both sides or not. You want your pattern to stay out. This is a reminder too that you can check out my Facebook page as well, everything's under Hallie's Creations, so it's very easy to find me, as well as on Instagram and TikTok. TikTok I use more as a promo um, springboard platform, as well as Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube are my main um, places that I do my shares on. I do my live shares on both, and once I get my studio back up and running after we move, then I'll be doing the live shares again. Right now I'm doing the collective shares because everything's in storage <laughs> until our new place gets built. So leave the space, getting back to your ribbon and your um, form here, leave space between the bows because on this particular wreath that you're making, you're going to put some um, contrasting ribbons and lace on it as well. Always make sure everything's symmetrical. And we're just going to continue to fill this form up with some cute bows. As we continue to fill up, I'm balancing out the wreath form. Gone. Another little reminder too, if you follow me, you know this little trick already, but if you're new to my channel, most of my ribbons and my materials I buy after the holidays, about a week or two after each holiday, you can pick up 70 to 90 percent off your materials just project what you're going to want for the next season and stock up christmas you can buy a lot of red <laughs> and green the green you can use for saint patty's day and the red you can use for valentine's day so there's just so many different possibilities out there so remember that during the holidays um after you know the holidays come and gone they blow out their um, extra merchandise and you can pick up a lot of fun crafting creative materials and most of my ribbons are from either um, Michaels 
or Hobby Lobby um, and the Dollar Tree. It just depends what the Dollar Tree has at the time. <laughs> Please take this moment to hit that subscribe and notify for you don't miss out on any future shares if you do like what you see. And that helps me grow my channel and it helps you stay in touch. So yeah, <laughs> remember to do that. And then those playlists that I have, there's um, the jewelry, there's wreath making, there's painting. Um, oh my goodness, there's so many different playlists that I have that you can jump on and kind of just look at different ways to make things. There's a DIY playlist where I do the porch boards and such like that. Um, the palette knife painting, the glass painting, the jewelry making, the wreath making, and florals. I love making florals and bridal bouquets. So just check those different playlists out on my channel. And we're going to get back to making this wreath here. So notice how I'm making <laughs> my little pop-ups. I'm making smaller bows to go between the bigger bows now. That's going to give it some depth and um, some dimension. So now we're going to make a really pretty bow and if you miss this um, there'll be another share on how to make a bow here shortly. I just wanted to give you some different options here but I like to make my focal point for the bow to match the actual um, piece that I'm working on and I'm going to use tool in it. The tooling um, you don't go real heavy on it you just yeah, two or three you know layers is more than enough and it gives it some pop. You'll notice here that I'm doing the loop, 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 and that's because both sides of the ribbon are the same. So you could either zigzag or loop. I just like doing the loops because it's just um, cleaner and easier, and they lay they lay a little bit better. So this one has two loops, it looks like, and then I'm going to do another 
uh, middle section for it. See so one, two, one, two. And lay that down, and now we're going to lay out the center section for it. Here we're going to do three layers of um, tool to give it some foo foo <laughs> to make it pop. And a little trick too is if you have satin ribbon that's kind of floppy, you can put tool with it, and that will um, push it out for you. So you'll notice how I graduated down in sizing. I went by um, more of a two inch ribbon to about a one, one and a half, and then to a one inch. And then I put the tool within that. And that makes that really pretty bow up there that you're looking at. Always fold your bow in half, make yourself some bunny ears where you can find the center. You can use a zip tie, you can use pipe cleaners. Um, if you don't have those and if you need to use your ribbon to tie it, that's fine. Um, just double knot it before it doesn't come undone. This is just a little bit more secure. What I'm going to do in the center of that bow is just lay one of my cute hearts in it. Uh, you can uh, tie a knot and put a knot over it if you wanted to. I have some really cute little hearts that I'm going to glue to that big heart. <laughs> and so I'm just going to leave that plain for it. It will glue down there pretty easy peasy. So I go around the wreath and add tulle and some smaller ribbon to give it some fillery and just make it more fluffy. By the time we're done with this, you're not even going to see that pink um, form that we sprayed the heart form. It's going to be all full of ribbons and tulle and it's going to look really cool. Remember to leave your ribbons long. You can always come back and trim them up later. And if you watch that other little tea lights that I did, that gave you an example of when you're trimming your ribbons down, you just hang on to them, throw them in a little basket, because you can use them on different projects going forward. On this particular form, you're going to, you are going to use the top and the sides to attach, because there's only three real bones in there to really add anything to, to um, zip tie to.
Remember when you're cutting down your zip ties, don't use your scissors. Use a good cutter. Uh, pick these up at any hardware store. They're not that expensive and they're a tool that you'll have forever and they will save your scissors. So just go through and snip those close to the head but not right to the head because you don't want them coming undone. Make sure they're on there nice and tight and then trim them down. What I'm showing you here is when you're making your um, wreaths and you're doing your little projects, use quality products. You're putting the time into it. Um, if it's something that's just fun and silly and you just want to do it, then yeah, the Dollar Tree flowers are fine. But if you're really making something nice and pretty, then um, put forth the um, a little bit of extra money and buy the really pretty flowers. Now, on these flowers here, these are from Michaels. And remember what I shared earlier, you can pick up things after the holidays for much less. These are 90% off Christmas flowers that I picked up from Michaels. So you're looking at very expensive flowers that I got for very little. <laughs> so just uh, check out the holidays and pick up your supplies and just kind of be planning for the next year. And these are Christmas flowers that as you can see I am actually using them for Valentine's Day. <laughs> I picked up a lot of red and white really pretty flowers. So here's the math. If they're a $9 flower, I picked them up for 90 cents, 90% 90 off, plus tax. So it's worth it to go after the holidays and kind of shop out those really cool deals. And I will post those little um, deals and stuff like that as I come across them on Reels. I do that on Facebook quite often. Not so much on YouTube, but on my Facebook page, when I see a good deal at the Dollar Tree or Michaels or whatever, and I score something like that, I'll put out a little reel for you can see it too as well, for you can jump down there and take advantage of that. So you're just going to use your hot glue. Remember not to cut too short to your um, stems because you don't want your flowers falling apart. You want to leave just a little bit of the stem left on there. Use your leaves and just um, go ahead and start accenting. And remember the little trick too is that you lay out um, your form and how you want to do things before you start gluing them on. Here I had already done that so I didn't show that. So I apologize in advance for that. But always lay out your flowers first. Make sure they're where you want them to be and then accent them. I left that space in the bottom tip of the heart because that's where the big bow is going to go. So much fun. So now we're just going to do some more fill in and bling it out a little bit more. Save your um, leaves on your plants as well because those you can use on future projects as well. I would suggest getting a little basket that you can just throw your little whatnots in and go from there. Here's the little trick I told you earlier about putting tool with the satin type ribbon to give it a little um, stiffness and bump. See how pretty that is? And it makes that um, satin ribbon stick out better. We're just going to zip tie that on there as a loop loop. A little bit more foo foo on there. And while we're doing this, I'm going to run and get myself something to drink, and I will be back. I need a cup of coffee. <laughs> I'll be right back as we put this together.
and twist and fluff and just make that as um, shape and form it the way we like it and then we will add the finishing touch the bow on the bottom and we'll be pretty much done so be aggressive when you're twisting and fluffing don't worry about it they're on there with zip ties and you're not going to tear it apart <laughs> So now we're just going to trim this up uh, the way we like it, attach the big bow, and we will be done. <laughs>
I also want to encourage you as you're making these reefs, remember when you first start making the projects, they don't look like what you want them to look like until they're done. So just stay with it. It's a process. Have fun with it. There's that little heart I told you that I was going to use as a little accent. And I also place those around in the little wreath as well, just to give it some continuity, some feng shui. <laughs> I'm holding that down right now because I put that on with a glue gun. I'm fluffing everything out. This particular wreath, my neighbor um, actually wanted it for her sister. So I said, oh, okay. <laughs> so this already was um, had a home before I ever finished it. Isn't that cute? So pretty. So much fun and so easy. 90% off materials from Michael's and the Dollar Tree. You can also get those um, wreath forms from Walmart or pretty much any party store during the Valentine's holiday type. On this chair is just a little recap of what we just did on the Valentine wreath. I'm just going to show you just quick and easy how to make a bow. You can use this bow on your Valentine packages as well as just going forward any type of gift package. Use the technique um, and it's super easy peasy. Another little reminder and I've shared this earlier is I do pick up my ribbons after the holidays. In fact, I drove out to Hobby Lobby today to take advantage of their 90% off, only to find out they're closed on Sunday. I forgot. <laughs> so I'll be going back into town tomorrow. <laughs> but yeah, grab your um, ribbons and stuff after the holidays, and you can just save a substantial amount of money, and you can just really get crazy and make them more fuller because you save the money on materials. So here we go on this. I'm showing you how to make this little bow. And I will jump back on here in a few moments. We've already just recapped this one here. And 
yeah. I absolutely fell in love with this little hummingbird feeder when I made it. What I've done here is I've taken one of the small, thinner bottles and turned it into a hummingbird feeder. Use the Mod Podge, dish, um, outside Mod Podge, or if you use the dishwasher safe, but outside Mod Podge is better because you're going to put it outside and it's going to get weathered. I took a thin bottle, not so much of a wine bottle, but a thin, um, elongated bottle and turned this into a hummingbird feeder. I made this for my neighbor, and like I shared, I just absolutely love this. I'm going to make one for myself here after I get moved. Um, one of the things, though, is when you're getting the little hummingbird feeder um, cork, I picked those up off of Amazon, and they're on my list, but they, they didn't hold the water in there, so make sure that your spout is going to work and that it's not a cosmetic one <laughs> and that they are functional. Uh, this is a little ring that I had um, the, the little clamp ring so you can make it more versatile and you can hook them onto anything so that's kind of cool to have that little if you do a solid ring then you're not going to be able to open it up and clamp it onto your um, different um, forms that you want to hang it off of remember too when you're doing hummingbird water to follow the instructions because you can make them sick if you don't do it right and you don't want to make your hummingbirds sick so make sure that you're using the right amount of um, hummingbird 
formula and that you do, you do it right. <laughs> okay, so, so so check that out. I don't have the actual um, formula, but you can Google it. It's it's out there. So just make your hummingbirds healthy. Happy healthy hummingbirds. So on this, I use the twine, but I use the twine that's thick and that it's got the wire going through it. That way, when the sun hits it, it's not going to sun rot and break over time. You've got the wire into the ribbon, and it makes it more sturdy. If you're going to put the time into something, do it right. And my little say, be a job, big or small, do it right or not at all. <laughs> Thank you, Grandpa Kalen, um, for that little reminder back in my younger years. So anyway, we're just going to loop this and make it to where I can hold it over the bottle and... As I've shared before, that this is an actual video that is on my playlist under the bottle art. Um, so if you want to hear everything I'm saying here as I'm walking you through it, you're welcome to, to double check it on that as well. This is just a collection of all the different things I have done up to this point that I thought I'd throw eight together for you. Remember too, when you're cutting those wire ribbons, don't use your scissors, use your wire cutters like I just did for you don't tear your scissors up. So now we have the two loops there. We're going to put that ring into those two loops. And I did two to make it more secure. And you're going to see as well that it's going to run down the bottle. Notice here how I'm pulling that down. I'm showing you to make it the length of the bottle. And you're going to be creating this upside down. Because remember, hummingbird feeders, the water comes down. So we have four strands that are going to go the full length of the bottle. And we're going to wrap those with more toy. So measure your twine. And also remember too to you make those strands longer because you can trim them up.
Here you'll notice I'm using the painter's tape to hold it in place. You can use masking tape. I like the painter's tape more because it's easier to take off and that's what I have in my workstation. That's what I use for most of my art. It's the painter's tape. So you're going to make it even along the bottom or it hangs evenly. And now you're just going to wrap, wrap, wrap. Now that you have it wrapped the way you want, you're going to add the Mod Podge on there. You're going to put it on thick because you want it to stick to the bottle. And remember, Mod Podge dries clear, so you don't have to worry about it being a little messy. And just go in there. I use a sponge. You can use the paintbrush as well, but I use the sponge. It just gives it more of that frosty effect.
As you're creating it, you can let it dry, come back, do another coat. You want it nice and sturdy. I did two coats on this. Now you're just going to make sure that those um, four little strands are nice and even for when you wrap the bottom part. So now you're going to wrap it again and that's going to secure and hold that in place when it's hanging with uh, the weight of the um, nectar in there.
Once you're done with it, you let it dry, trim it up, and you're good to go. <laughs> so enjoy that little hummingbird feeder. And now we're going to move on to the grapevine um, hanging wreath. This is just a little different. I picked this up at the Michaels, again, after Valentine's Day, so I got a really good deal on them. I picked up a few. Uh, I try to go in and grab these little items up for I can do different shares for you, but this is your hanging hearts. And all you're going to do is simply tie ribbon all over it. <laughs> it's that easy and put a cute little bow on it. And it's so, so cute for a little decoration for Valentine's Day. So that's pretty much it on this one. <laughs> Remember to subscribe, hit your like, notify, and follow depending if you're on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, if you hit that notify and you subscribe on YouTube, you'll be notified when new releases come out. And on the Facebook page, if you like and follow, then you would be added to my Hallie's Creations. And if you wanted to be added to the Hallie's Creations private group, I can send you an invite for that as well. We're just going to add a little bit of tooling on here to give it a little fluff and a um, little pop. All these materials are picked up at Michael's and the Dollar Tree. And I did notice, too, while I was at Michael's uh, yesterday that they have these vines again this year. So you can pick these vines up at Michael's. Usually, um, any hobby store will have them as well. Sometimes Wally's World does, Walmart. Um, I haven't seen them at the Dollar Tree, though. But the Dollar Tree does have a whole bunch of fun little things that you could pick up to decorate and kind of use the same technique on. We're adding the different um, ribbons, we're fluffing it out, and that's pretty much it. 
trim and fluff, and enjoy! Now we're moving on to the painted glass, and this is actually glass that's embellished with um, the pearls as well as turned into a candle. This again is on my playlist. Uh, this would be under the glass painting um, playlist. What I've done is you always clean your glass with alcohol. That's something I share every time I do a share. Clean your glass. Um, when you paint on it, you're going to bake it to set that in if you want to reuse it. If you're using it for decorative purposes, I always um, bake it anyway. Baking directions are on the playlist. Uh, 325 for 25 minutes. You don't want to go any hotter. You don't want to burn your white paint. Um, always put it in a cool oven, one that has not been used or turned on yet. Then you turn it on. I do time bake, and then I let it sit overnight and then cool down and then I take them out in the morning. So you never want to touch hot glass. It can pop and break on you. So just be very careful. And this is something you do with adult supervision. Um, this is not something that kids do not bake glass. Please don't do that. So these are acrylic. That's my disclaimer. These are acrylic paint pens. And I like the acrylic because it bakes into the glass nicely. Don't put them on too heavy, otherwise they'll bubble. Just a nice little design. They can be clear because when you put the candle wax in there, it's going to pop anyway. And what I did is I used different colors just to give it that pop. Uh, also remember, as I share, as you're creating something, you may not like it when you first start, but it's going to finish up really cool probably. You just got to stay with it and, and work it. So paint um, with an acrylic paint pen is what I used on this one. I let it dry. I baked it and then I came back and I put the embellishments on it. After I did the embellishments and I had it all the way I wanted, then I melted down the soy wax in the microwave and then I poured it into the glass. I also made, um, you'll notice on the top on one of these, their uh, cute little um, scent design on the top for, um, and I use those out of those melts those candy melts that you, the silicone melts that you can buy at Michael's or the Hobby Lobby stores or any place like that. Even Walmart has them. And I use those for my soy um, candle, cute little they, little inserts. And you'll see that a little bit better on one as we get down the share a little bit more. And again, that's on this share walks you through all that. So I buy the soy um, candle wax because I'm allergic to everything under the sun <laughs> so what I do because of my allergies being so bad anything with the oil in it does not set well with me so I use the peppermint that you buy out of the grocery store in the baking section the pure peppermint extract or the vanilla and I get the clear vanilla and those are the two that I use to make my scents I also will break down on the peppermint I will break up the candy peppermints that you can get and I'll sprinkle that in that to give it a little color and a little pop. And you can also, when you're doing this, if you want to throw a, um, a little bit of coffee beans in there and a little bit of coffee, that smells kind of cool when you do the mocha. So there's different ways you can be creative making your own candles without having that oil base in there. So now we're coming up to where I'm going to show you the little wax mold that I use. These are the little silicone foams. And what I do is I take an ice pick and I poke the middle of that heart for the wick will come up. And you can do that with any design, and it's just a really fun little way to finish it off, and it looks really cute. Um, on the embellishments, those are flat back pearls that I've used with Mod Podge. Now, if you're not going to wash this, of course, you don't have to use the dishwasher Mod Podge. You can use just the regular mat or the satin, depending on what you want to use. Um, but I did that and with the flat back pearls, and we just pop them on there. Super easy, super fun, just a little time consuming, 
but it's therapeutic and it's restful. It's peaceful. So this is, just get in there and just kind of do your dot, dot, dot. And that little stylus that I'm using, that is from the Dollar Tree. And it works great to add um, your little dots on and such. And I use that for painting as well. And for when I'm gluing. Instead of using my fingers and burning them. <laughs> when I'm using a glue gun, I use that little stylus. So... So I'm going to let you just kind of watch the process here a little bit, and I'll be back. So if you're wondering where I picked up that pink little tray, that's another Dollar Tree. <laughs> everything at the Dollar Tree is $1.25 now and up. So don't go in there thinking that everything's a dollar anymore because it's not. <laughs> But that's where that little tray came from. And they're really handy dandy. I like those. Um, so we're just going to embellish this and get kind of crazy with it. And just bling it out and make it our own. This is a cute little Valentine's gift for a teacher. Even for your kiddos. Or for mom if a kiddo's making this. Or for your girlfriend. Or, or I don't think boyfriends would really be excited about it. But <laughs> like your BFF or whatever. Or just for yourself. A lot of these things, you know, just make for yourself and enjoy them. You know, don't feel like you have to give everything away. Uh, enjoy it and um, put it out and have fun with it. So now we're moving on to project number seven. And this is the Ribbons and Lace Heart Wreath. This wreath I picked up um, after Valentine's Day. These are those god, ugly, awful... <laughs> I'm sorry, but they are. They just they're just so weird looking. <laughs> but these are those wreaths, um, the, the the forms that you can get to decorate for Valentine's Day, and they're cute during Valentine's Day and stuff like that. But to me, it's kind of like uh, you could do more with that. <laughs> so anyway, what I did is I brought it home, and I thought, you know, if I threw a whole bunch of ribbons and lace on that, that would be really really cute, and it would give that fullness and that fillery in the back and that little bling bling pop pop so I absolutely love these forms for doing what I did with this and this is one of my favorites so all you're going to do is just load that up with a whole bunch of ribbons and lace and tool and just go for it um, I did the bow hanging on the bottom because I just really love that effect um, and be looking I'm going to be making another one similar to this but not exactly this one because I did have a client that just reached out to me and asked me for a Valentine's wreath. And although I'm in the middle of moving and everything, I went out and I grabbed the materials to make for her. Because I've been doing um, things for her for a while. And with um, my heart was just like, you know what, I, got, I, I need to make Connie a Valentine's Day wreath. So I went out and I picked up the things to do that. 
Everything I have right now is in storage because we are moving and it's all packed and put away. But I am going to be videotaping that process for, um, we will do a live and um, it's going to be different. But I do have a Valentine's wreath coming up that I will be making. So, but these are really fun with that form. And again, like I shared, you know, anything you see here, they're on the playlist. So this would be under the wreath playlist. I think I have over 400 videos and shorts, so there's a lot to pick from. And as I continue to, you know, get moved and get my studio set up, then I'll be doing more new shares again. Right now I'm reworking my things and making them a little bit better and a little bit easier to watch for you. That's why I've been doing the collections. But see how these are all these little bows and they have all the little fun fillery stuff in there and how that fullness of that wreath just brings it all out. It's just so much fun to, to use those. So grab those up after Valentine's Day. I'd say at least three or four of them and have them for, you can um, make these for gifts next year. Fun for weddings and, and bridal parties and bridal showers and things like that as well. Notice here, too, that I'm using my wire cutters to cut those zip ties, because all those are put on with zip ties, and then I can go back, and I can trim the zip ties down, and then um, leave your ribbons long, because you can go in and shape them to the form of your wreath as you like, like them. It, it puts it all together. Another thing, too, is that if you don't have the zip ties to, to put them on with, just use pipe cleaners. That's fine. Um, if you tie them on with ribbons, just give a double knot because they will come undone. In fact, I always say three knot it just to really play it safe. Um, but you can knot them on, on as well. But remember to use your wire cutters before you don't destroy your scissors. 
So they're a good investment. And you can pick those up at any hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's, any hardware store. You can even buy them off of Amazon. So at this point, we're just going to trim and fluff and um, be aggressive. Get in there and just really fluff it out and make it pop. Trim it all down and you will have a beautiful heart-shaped wreath that you can enjoy for the years to come or gift um, to someone that is special. There you go. Bam! Now we're moving on to number eight, and this will be our last one. This is the Salvation Stretch Bracelet. And what's really fun about this one is it tells the story of the Christian faith and salvation. And I go through each one of these and tell you what each color bead means, and it's also posted on here as well. So it gives you that um, little story behind it. Um, there it is right up in the corner, and then I will post it again. What I do is I use the stretch cord and then string the beads um, in whatever style you want. I string them where I can just go down the, you know, black is for sin, white is for purity, you know, and I just go through the whole thing. Um, and that's how I string them along. But there it is again. I put a couple little cute little um, charms on there and that little HJ is... Um, this is my trademark for when I make something, I've, I've started doing that. This little device here is actually for um, soldering, and it works great <laughs> for holding your jewelry as you're drying it and making it. So what I'm going to do here is after I have it strung, I knot it three times to give it that real nice um, sturdiness. I glue the knot and I let it dry. So here we go, clear, the clear bead is for the Holy Spirit. And then this share, I'm kind of explaining it to you. And this is one of my first shares, so it's a little bit rough, um, but it still gets the point across. <laughs> so, and then the blue is for baptism, and I just kind of go through and I um, explain to you what each bead means. This is a fun little gift to give for Valentine's Day because, you know, what's the greatest gift of love was Jesus giving his life, right? Um, but I, so that's going to put this on the end. But it's also a great um, little gift you could give in like a cute little um, baggie or those cute little um, bags that they have at the Dollar Tree. They're little netted bags. You can put the beads in there with um, the cord and everything. And a kiddo can put that together. They can make their own little bracelet. You put the little charms and stuff in there. So it's not just something that you can make. You can give it raw in a little baggie to someone, and they can put it together with the little story in there. 
And if you uh, want the story, you're more than welcome just to screenshot it and then crop it and print it off. That's fine. Uh, everything I share is shareable. I don't do the copyright and all that stuff because when I share stuff, I want other people to learn and grow from it. So, I mean, just don't take credit for it. <laughs> that's the that would be so wrong but this is something that I can't take credit for because I've seen this and I just kind of duplicated it and put my own little twist on it so um, you're welcome to do the same and just enjoy it like I said I put a few little charms on here so what I'll do is when I'm done with this I'll tie it three times with Father Son Holy Spirit <laughs> three cord is not easily broken um, if you're going to use beads that you might be able to run two strands through, that's even better because it gives it more durability. You'll notice too on the end there, I have like a little barrel um, charm. That's going to cover up the knot. Once I um, knot it and let it dry and I trim it, that little barrel knot covers up the knot that's going to be there. And that's just a little trick that I learned through the process of making these. So... This little device here is about $10 on Amazon. It works great. Just use super glue. If you have jewelry glue, you can even use that. But just, just a drop or two, that's all you need. Because you've already got it knotted three times. So you're just going to pull that away. Do your super glue. Hold it for a few minutes. About 20 seconds. A few minutes. <laughs> about 20 seconds or so. Let that dry a little bit. And then you're going to leave it on that little device while it finishes drying. And then trim it. You're good to go. Remember, too, if it's going to be trimmed and you're going to have that little barrel on there, you can leave just a little bit of the trim on there because it's not going to be seen. You don't have to cut it all the way down and have it come apart on you. I'm showing you there that little barrel, how it covers up the knot, and it just finishes it off. I have, I think, a little butterfly on there for new life and a little cross for the crucifixion. And I have my little charm as HJ, and I made it. And uh, you could do the same thing. You can get little things and get those little stamps and put your initials on it too when you're making things. It's just fun, like I shared. It's on the back here so you can um, screenshot it and print that off if you like. Have a good day and a better tomorrow. Thank you for hanging out with me at Hallie's Creations. I know you can watch many things and I appreciate you tuning in to me. <laughs> so peace out and have a good day and a better tomorrow. Bye!